one thing that is really puzzling to me about this situation is because, I mean, you're this is really a David and Goliath scenario here. You're going up against Dianne Feinstein. Her net worth, I mean, just excluding um, the multinational corporations who are contributing to her campaign, she's worth $70 million. Her husband is a billionaire. So they have all the power and influence in the world, and you manage to um, eclipse her in terms of donations. But even with that being said, even though that clearly by American political standards that should theoretically make you the favorite, um, there's basically virtually uh, no coverage of your campaign whatsoever. Anytime I see articles referencing her primary challenge, it's with Kevin DeLeon as the progressive. No mention of you, no mention of another progressive, David Hildebrand. And you were even left off of polls. So that way it seems as though you, you don't even exist. So wh why do you think this is happening? I know that that's kind of a, a really complex issue, but... It seems as though there's almost like this, con I don't want to use the word conspiracy, but it seems like the forces that be, you know, within the Democratic Party establishment are trying to pretend like you don't exist. So why is that the case? How can they not pay attention to you if you really are raising this much money? And that's pretty much the only way that we measure success in America for campaigns. It's, it's, um, it's a feedback loop think tank bubble that exists in the establishment. When we talk about the establishment, it's not just legislators, it's not just lobbyists, it's not just corporations, it's also our media, and it's people who are trying to rise up in media as well. People want connections. They want to themselves, you know, they have their career to look out for. And so they're thinking about how do I make sure that I'm a credible person? They want to continue to to rub elbows and, and get that next promotion. Combine that with being spread thin, with being really extremely busy, with having all of these races to cover, with having all of these candidates to cover. Uh, it's so on one hand, really trying to empathize with these journalists, I understand how difficult it can be to make sure they're covering me on top of all of the other races in California that are pretty contentious. Um, but on, at, the, at the same time, I find it in, in, inexcusable because I do think it's their responsibility if they're going to be writing an article or doing a report on a particular race that they at least take 20 minutes to do research on all of the candidates and see who else they should be including in their coverage, at least to, to just mention. Uh, so I experienced this with Wolfpack. We, the, the kind of propaganda that I saw around those who were fighting us at Wolfpack, and, and it wasn't just Republicans, it was actually more Democrats than Republicans, was quite an experience and i saw how it and I, I experienced it personally just how fast it works where really credible people in the media are working so fast to pump out stories that they trust another credible person in the media whose article they read who trusts another credible person's news report that they saw on tv and it and it it happens in a blink of an eye and before you know it the the misinformation is out and people don't know what to believe or they automatically believe what they read or what they hear it's 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 very problematic and so it's naturally going to happen in um in races like this it, on top of the fact that we know the establishment doesn't want us to to actually be in office they don't want us to be in dc they don't want us to be in the state legislatures and they've actually made it quite clear i think it was recently was it Bill Clinton who just recently said, "Make sure you keep the Bernie Crats out"? It we've was. seen, yeah, and we've seen what the what the um, the DNC has done to to remove the the Bernie Crats from having a say. And uh, so, you know, all of those things combined, like you said, it's complicated, but it all is it is something we need to be talking about. That said. There has been some progress in that regard with my campaign, which is exciting. The, the LA Times has covered me, not as much as they should, of course. Um, San Francisco Chronicle, uh, to their credit, they, they did cover me when enough of uh, people really reached out to them and said, hey, you, please, please, please make sure you cover this person and do your job. Um, there's, there's been a few others that are, are starting to pick up and, and pay attention as we've seen, we're starting to see right now. So it's working. It's just taking a lot of work on our part. Uh, we have to be super creative with, with money because even though I got raised, uh, both of them, 
they, I still have a lot less money than they do. So mm. Diane Feinstein has $15 million right now in the coffers for this race alone. Mm. Five of it she gave to her uh, of her own money to the campaign. Wow. And yeah. And <sighs> the average U.S. Senate race costs $10 million. I have less than 400000 And what I've done with that money... Well, it shows you that I've run a nonprofit. <laughs> so I know. And it also shows you that I really grew up from the working class. I know how to stretch a dollar. Um, so we've, we've, we've been extremely successful in the staff that we've been able to hire that works then to support the over nearly 1,800 volunteers that we now have to help us. And that's, that's to massive. combat. It is. It's super massive. And so, I mean, you talk about grassroots and showing that it can work, you know, it's a lot of work, but I think it's also a lot of work probably to have a campaign with a lot of money. It's just you're, you're spending your time and all of that work having expensive dinners with people, um, having expensive drinks with people. And instead, what I'm doing is, is having drinks and dinner at low budge restaurants uh, with with my you know everyday volunteers and and constituents where we just kind of meet up at a coffee shop or we meet up at a brewery and say okay hey what are we going to do to come together and make this happen uh and and through that and some creative means using social media and not overlooking the youth vote, the millennial vote, we are seeing some pretty good momentum right now. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.